We are reminding ourselves the meaning of Surat of Juz Amma. We had reached in uh, Al Nazi'at, Surat Al Nazi'at. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. We reached the last few verses. We said, Wastaid Bullah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking in, in the surah about his ayat and about his punishment and about his rewards and what is awaiting us in akhirah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning those who don't believe those who transgress, those who prefer this lowly world, hayat al-dunya, those who prefer to follow materialism, to invest all their life force, all their time in this dunya, those ones, what is awaiting for them is jahim, is hell. It is going to be their abode. Allah did not create us for this world. He created us for Him. He created this world for us and created us for Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the one who honored us with the opportunity to be his true servants is not going to be happy with us if we only acknowledge this world and not its creator. So, this warning is very clear. And those who, Allah then talks about those, those who were conscious, aware, acknowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who invested in their akhirah, those who were fearing to displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, man khafa maqama rabbi, wa nafsa anil hawa, and struggled against their desires, struggled against their egoism to do the right thing, struggled against immediate satisfaction for eternal satisfaction. Those people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is awaiting them? فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى At that time, Allah, your abode, those people's abode is Jannah. May Allah make us from them. And then Allah, and then this, this surah ends, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ السَّاعَةَ Because they used to make fun of Prophet Oh, when is this judgment day of yours? Give us the time, the exact time. When will it be this judgment day? What do you know about it here? Let us hear what you, what you have to say. Say to them, This judgment day, Allah knows when it will be. <coughs> and Prophet ﷺ when Sayyidina Jibreel, Sayyidina Abdullah, Sayyidina Ibn Kathir, he mentions the hadith when Sayyidina Jibreel said, as Prophet Sallallahu in Hadith Jibreel, Mata sa'a? He said, Mal mas'oolu anha bi a'lam min sail The one who is asking is not more uh, aware than the one who is being asked. Innama anta mundhiru man yakhshaha. He said, your job is to warn those who believe in it. Believe in Judgment Day. Believe in the allotted hours. Forget about those mustahzi'een. Forget about those who belittle and make fun. They don't believe. Your job is to warn those who believe, who accept this. Those people, what is awaiting them? We just mentioned what is awaiting them. كَأَنَّهُمْ يَوْمَ يَرَوْنَهَا لَمْ يَلْبَثُوا إِلَّا عَشِيَّةً أَوْ ضُحَاهَا He said, when Judgment Day arrives, they, this whole world they fought about, they struggled for, they denied, they lied, they belittled, they fought people who are coming from Allah as messenger. This world they fought for, كَأَنَّهُمْ لَمْ يَلْبَثُوا إِلَّا عَشِيَّةً أَوْ ضُحَا As if at that time, when they are faced with eternity, when they realize that what Prophet Wasallam revealed to them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth in that they will think as if they stayed a night as if they lived from evening till morning till duha when the sun 
This whole life will be like that for them. Yeah? So it's serious business. This Juz Amma summarizes for us this whole existence. What it's for, its purpose, and where we are going to end, depending on our choices. And this is the second surah, and Naziat ends with, with this verse. The third surah is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Abasa wa tawalla an jaahu al-a'ma wa ma yudrika la'allahu yazzaka aw yazzaka فتنفعه الذكرى. This surah, in many tafsirs, it, it starts with the story when Prophet ﷺ was sitting with the chieftain, those people who were denying earlier, in that surah that Allah mentions belittling Prophet ﷺ. So those chiefs, the high society, the big uh, heads of tribes, the people whose words are never, never denied in their society, came to Prophet ﷺ. And he was giving them his full attention because he is rahmatan lil alameen. Salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi. He wanted to bring them to Islam. And not only that, because he knew if, if those chiefs come to Islam, then their whole people behind them will, will join. So he was focused on them. And in that moment, who came? Abasa wa tawalla an ja'ahu al-a'ma. The verse says, he frowned and turned away when the blind man came to him. Salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi. Some mufassir say that the one who frowned was Prophet That hasha thumma kalla. That the one who frowned and turned away from the blind man was Prophet. But it is not befitting. Yani, this is not my words. It's Shaykh Abdul Ba'ithi Kittani, Shaykh Yusri Jabr, and many wrote on, on this verse that it is not befitting to attribute frowning to the mercy to the world. Abasa. Huh? In the whole Quran, Abasa is only mentioned twice. Here, he frowned and turned away. And in another place, it is mentioned, in Surah Al Muddathir, that, and Shaykh Yusri Jabr, Allah bless him, he shows that the one that Allah was talking about in Surah Al Muddathir is Al Walid, one of the chieftains of Quraysh. He's the father of Sayyidina Khalid al Walid. And he left this world unbeliever. He is the one that said, heard the Quran, accepted that it is not from a human being, because they, were, they knew the eloquence of Arabic, and they knew it is mysteries. So when he heard it, he described it in such a way, beauty, he says, this cannot be a human. Uh, but then his people said, we're not going to accept. He said, okay, we have to say he's a magician, even though he knew. So Allah called him, in Surah Al-Muddathir, Abasa. He was describing what this, this one he was thinking. ثُمَّ عَبَسَ ثُمَّ عَبَسَ ثُمَّ أَدْبَرَ وَاسْتَكْبَرَ فَقَالَ إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا سُحِرٌ يُؤْثَرٌ When he said, oh, okay, let's say he's a magician. He's making magic. That Abasa fi'l, verb, was attributed to him in that. And it is said in the seer that he was there when the blind man came. He was one of the chieftains. So the one who frowned, and the Arabic language permits, because it is mutlaqa, it's abasa wa tawalla, who? It's open. When the blind man came to him. So the abs was attributed to the walid. When, because these chieftains, they didn't sit with the riffraff. When they sat in their majalis, you had to qualify. You had to be somebody from the leaders of your tribe. You cannot just, they, they were so arrogant. So when this poor blind man came to Prophet Wasallam, when they saw him, he frowned. Like, you want us to sit with this one? 
That's that's the ta'wil that is befitting for the qadr of Prophet Not that Prophet is the one who frowned. No. Prophet was concerned and he was focused on them, but he didn't frown. وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّهُ يَزَّكَّانَ Allah is saying to Prophet ﷺ that this blind man came to you to purify himself. Huh? To remind himself so that you remind him of his Lord. أَوْ يَذَّكَّرَ فَتَنْفَعُهُ الذِّكْرَ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَمَّا مَنْ استغنى. And Then Allah is saying him, why are you concerned with these people? We earlier said, that innama anta mundiru man yakhshaha you are only your, your duty is to warn those who, are, who accept who are fearful who are believing and then in this surah right away allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam these people these arrogant people giving you hard time not accepting trying to to make you deny allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ما عليك أن يزكى. It is أما من استغنى فأنت له تصدى. You are you are trying very hard to convince them. He says forgive them. Leave them. May they never be purified. ما عليك. It's not your job to purify them. وأما من جاءك يسعى وهو يخشى. I'm the one who is coming to you with with beautiful intentions with humility. And this is, this is, he said, when he used to say, when he used to see uh, uh, the Sahabi who came, the blind Sahabi who came, he used to see him, he says, Ahlam billadhi atabani bihi rabbi. He says, welcome to the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned to me, why, why didn't you give him more attention? Itab. Huh? Even here in Sayyidina Ibn Kathir, it says that the Prophet being reprimanded because he frowned. And this is Sayyidina Ibn Kathir's tafsir. And many of the tafsirs attribute frowning to the Prophet. But there are ulama, alhamdulillah, from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah now, who prove to you linguistically and, and suluk also with manners that it is impossible for Prophet to, to frown. We are not bringing this from ourselves, from ulama. So who is this blind man? He's Sayyidina Ibn Ibn Maktoum. His name is, the son of, his mother's name is Maktoum. They called him Ibn Ibn Ummi Maktoum. What a lucky, what a lucky Sahabi. Mentioned in the Quran, until judgment day we are reciting the Quran, mentioning him. <laughs> Quran and Yutla, we pray in our prayers. Look at the humility. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give a simple abd, humble, blind, of no importance. Oh, and all these chief chieftains now, where are they? All the big uh, leaders, where are they? In what condition they are? أما من استغنى فأنت له تصدى وما عليك ألا يزك. Leave those people. Those who think they are, they know everything. People come to me to ask me, how do you want me to accept you, your opinion? I am higher than you in in society, in in status. يعني see how sometimes. What is deemed as a favor, as a ni'mah in Allah, Allah is becomes a ni'mah. Yani the thing that people look up for, high position. Yeah, but your high position prevented you from accepting the truth. So is it a ni'mah or is it a ni'mah? Is it an affliction? Which one is it? Ah, the rich people of Quraysh who had access to their nadi. Majority of them, those people didn't accept Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi only the poor people accept the Prophet. The humble people accept the Prophet. So sometimes having too much in dunya prevents you from 
being a servant that is pleasing to Allah. And in earlier, if you go back to the earlier, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا that the real true success is eternal success. Yeah? When you're spending eternity, not a few, few days, even people, people will perceive when they are resurrected, they will perceive their entire life as a day or an hour or an overnight. Huh? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding to be humble true servants to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa min Allahi tawfiq bi hurmati al-fatiha sallallahu Muhammad. Thank you all who join us online. Barakallah fikum and assalamu alaikum